Welcome, dear viewers, to today's episode of Visite. It's great that you are watching again. And it's great that we can deal with the topic together today. It's an inquiry about a gynaecological examination that refers to a cervical intraepithelial hyperplasia. We used to call it PAP. Today we say CIN123. That is, when smear tests are made on the cervix and show plastic, dysplastic changes that are classified based on being unencumbered or also on their normal regression or their corresponding incipient malignancy. And the question is here, an observation at CIN1 that could actually recede spontaneously, but with CIN2, and that was the request of the viewer, to what extent it can be observed for three months at all and then evaluated again? Or what can you actually do? The question that I cannot answer here now is, has this smear test happened? Sure, it happened. And of course, the question is also, how can this smear be classified now? Is it dysplasia that is caused causally provoked by inflammation and we don't want to fool ourselves at all just within the scope of our purely physical contact during sexual intercourse we exchange an incredible amount of bacterial material with one another these are trichomonads there are so many microbial and viral processes that occur again and again here if the mucous membrane is not intact and the health of the mucous membrane is a bit of the key here. So the mucous membrane is covered with a so-called biofilm. The mucous membrane has a secretory IgA, an immune system. If this mucosal immunity is no longer intact, then it does not matter. In any case, the mucous membrane will be inflamed. Papillo, papilloma viruses, as we know today, can tend to develop into cervical cancer later. That is why we are very consistently behind these questions. And yet the malignancy, that is the degree of malignancy, is rated here as very low for CIN2. And actually, it's an observation criterion. That means, for my terms, you don't have to understand the question locally, but you have to think it much further. You can now use the time well and act. That said, there is neither a worry nor an extreme anxiety needed because it's all good, it's all on time, and the following should now be considered. I would have a stool exam done because during the stool examination you can measure the so-called secretory IgA. This is what defines our mucosal immunity and if this mucosal immunity is too low then I can build up the mucosal immunity and of course that begins in the intestines too. And when the bowel is in a situation where you already, as a person, are repeatedly having difficult bowel movements, gas, diarrhea, and have not regulated the whole system for a long time, then of course your mucous membrane has to sacrifice itself and becomes desolate. So you cannot separate the mucosal function from the function of the cervix. And that's why you need a good build-up here. So make sure you have good bowel movements. In terms of nutrition, leave out everything that drastically leads to inflammation of the mucous membranes. And in the intestine, this is mainly the grain today, gluten and dairy products from cow's milk. Reduce the sugar in your diet. 
These are three essential things, without perhaps going into further detail now. Of course, a mucous membrane always needs convalescence which I have to build up again and again. Have your vitamin A level measured? Vitamin A has something to do with mucosal regeneration. Zinc is one of the most important trace elements intracellularly. No mucosal regeneration without zinc. So when we examine patients, we see that almost 50 to 60% of our patients are def definitely zinc deficient. But this zinc deficiency may not be immediately noticeable. Maybe the hair is getting a little thinner. Maybe it's also getting greyer. Maybe you have white dots on your nails. But the effects of a zinc deficiency, zinc serves as the all-rounder of the cell. We cannot even measure them at the moment. And for all of them, for your findings, positive findings now. Mucosal regenerative processes. Also think about viruses. There are a lot of herpes viruses that make mucous membrane processes. With herpes simplex, you can see it. But of course, there is also herpes herpes simplex internally. There are other herpes viruses such as EBV, herpes zoster and many others. You can stop viruses by taking high doses of vitamin C. And with high doses I don't mean more than 200 milligrams, so two grams, because otherwise the body will excrete the vitamin C again. It is best to take it in a depot, which is released slowly. Or you take the vitamin C in 200 milligram steps several times a day. This is actually almost the best absorption. But there are also suppositories that contain vitamin C, the vagi C. So they are like suppositories and ovules that you can use. Zinc, of course, also measure the zinc level here. And I see that sometimes it is not easy to buffer zinc. Zinc can also be injected IV, never intramuscularly. IV with the zinc inject diluted on table salt. Otherwise, please take it in orally. And it may have to be 30 to 60 milligrams in the beginning, according to your zinc level. And the other is the amino acid L-lysine. L-lysine with a proven viral load. Or in the context of prevention, stops the virus stage. And this trilogy, which is actually very good to apply very consistently for a mucosal irritation or inflammation or beginning dysplasia. Mucous membranes also want to be cared for. And I don't know your age, but the vaginal mucous membrane in particular has a very acidic environment. And this acidic environment is occupied by a great deal of lactic acid and bifid by t bacteria. All ovules, for example, such as glinoflor, vagisan, these are all ovules and vaginal suppositories that rebuild the mucous membrane in its healthy environment. It just needs that. Life needs these prerequisites in order to stay healthy. And every day we expose our body through all openings to an incredibly high stress pressure on the microbial level. Parasites, fungi, bacteria, they are part of our life. Our body is made up of hundreds of times microorganisms as body cells. Sometimes we lose that in medicine. Bacteria only come into conversation again and again when we think they have caused something. And we have to do something about these bacteria. But we should really only make sure that all of them in us live in a good balance with one another and that the things that ensure 
that, for example, such pathological germs do not get the upper hand can be balanced fairly well by the body itself. This is why secretory IgA is so necessary, because it makes up the mucosal immunity. Everywhere, also in our noses, also in our eyes, also in our esophagus, stomach, intestines, mucous membranes of the urinary tract, and of course the entire gynaecological sector. So a stool examination is advisable. If papillomaviruses are detected, then there is a very interesting product from the company Microimmunotherapy. It is a Belgian company. This is the 2L Papi. And this 2L Papi are capsules that you don't swallow. Capsules that you open and sprinkle the contents into your mouth. It's always a blister with 10 capsules in the pack. 30 capsules for the whole month. And you take this 2L Papi, one capsule every day. 10 days in a row, number 1 to number 10. And then you start again with number 1 to number 10. And so it is a swing therapy. Why? In this capsule, there are no homeopathic remedies. But these are fragments that can be clinically proven immu immunomodulating factors of our immune system. Cytokines, nucleic acids, hormones, growth factors. So all of them, which the body now needs in order to regain self-regulation with a burden caused by the papillomavirus. We have had a very, very good experience in this regard, and I have to tell you that this is a very valuable therapy that you should then also do over a period of about seven months. So this proof of CIN1 does not need to be worrying at all. And for CN, CIN2, you should react and act. I would recommend something else. I would recommend you to do a differential blood count. One can also make a so-called immune status. And this immune status would show to what extent all fractions of the immune system, lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, Treg cells, suppressor cells, killer cells are in a balanced ratio. And based on the immune status, you can see to what extent the cascade is shifted strongly antiviral or strongly antibacterial imbalance. Likewise, the shift of the Th1 and the Th2. So when you talk to your family doctor about these things, then you should get to the bottom of these things so that you can find out if there's a lack of lymphocytes. Because lymphocytes are, of course, incredibly important for defence and are constituents in the cell membranes of the intestinal mucosa or the natural killer cells, which are called by vitamin D, are very targeted to deal with a viral or tumour developing mutated cell in a very targeted manner. And there is also epigallocatechin gallate, which is actually an extract from green tea. There are also a number of green tea extracts in capsule form. But this green tea extract has a very stimulating effect. For example, for angiogenesis. So if a cell mutates, if a cell then divides more and more, it must of course have nutrients. It must be able to dock onto vessels. And that's something that green tea extract is blocking. So the cell ultimately starves. 
not because it does not get any nutrients and it highly stimulates the natural killer cells so that they are of course also sufficiently available as their own anti-defense. I always think it's good to measure such things beforehand that you don't just take everything at random but that you also measure the zinc level that you also measure how high is my selenium for example <coughs> one of the most important protective enzymes or trace elements for our protective enzymes in the detoxification metabolism that you might take this as an opportunity at this moment to check am I toxically loaded how about my um, aluminium heavy metals there are many ways to diagnose heavy metals as well. Am I an amal amalgam carrier? Then it really has nothing to do with my organism being allowed to remain unencumbered because with every bite, with every swallow of saliva, with every abrasion, I of course pass on this toxicity and my mucous membranes are the first to be confronted with it. I would also recommend doing a parasite check. This is possible today with very good electroacupuncture according to Vol. So there are colleagues who deal with parasites who also excel in parasite diagnostics using electroacupuncture, bioresonance or the salvia device. This is a form of bioresonance device. There is little point in believing that you can have a three day stool sample Answer these questions now. This is about a completely different parasitic load than that which can be perhaps detected in a stool. And I would find that very, very valuable that you can actually take a lot in your hands now to turn your body in the right direction again. In one of the last shows, we talked about iodine. In this case too, please be sure to look at the iodine. You indirectly come to the question of whether there's an iodine deficiency if you really look at all of the thyroid values. Is the thyroid tending to hypofunction? But you can also do an iodine test, a skin test with Lugol solution 2% and see in what time, how quickly, after how many hours the body absorbs valuable iodine and iodine has a great antiviral, antibacterial and also antiparasitic effect. We also give curcumin to our patients as part of anti-inflammation. Curcumin in liposomal, liposomal form. Up to 2000 studies are now available about curcumin against the development of tumour cells. But curcumin also has a very high anti-inflammatory effect and I would definitely recommend taking curcumin too. Curcumin liposomal as drops three times a day and that can then be increased individually to five to seven drops. There are so many things for this local problem which is actually not a problem at all. But of course we carefully say that we want to see how it develops. It's a form of change, dysplasia, but it doesn't have to mean anything. And yet it's a good, it's good to think about all these things in good time. Merle Zink wrote a really nice book. She was affected herself and has manoeuvred herself out of a misery and has grown into a very wonderful person who, through a very great book which is called Retreat Yourself, is giving so much practical, wonderful guidance and is able to perceive her life to 100% in its essential fullness, as sometimes it is a difficult pass that we humans have to go in order to be grounded and to transform our body 
into a loving new care and taking it into our own hands again. Health is not a gift from God. Health is a personal task. And I hope and wish from the bottom of my heart that for these things that have now come from a spectator, but also I believe affect a lot of people, affect a lot of women, that you may have received some guidance. With this in mind, I wish you all a wonderful Sunday evening and I am looking forward to the next Sunday with you. Goodbye. Goodbye.